Aloha, spooky nerds, and welcome to Talking Strange, a paranormal pop culture show with the Den of Geek Network. I'm your host, journalist, author, researcher of all things weird, Aaron Sagers. You can also catch me as the host of the Netflix series 28 Days Haunted, and you can see me on the Travel Channel and Discovery Plus show Paranormal Caught on Camera. We're now in the midst of our fifth season on that one, and we're already filming R6. So if you know me, and you probably know me to some degree if you're watching this, you know that I am a bit of a globe trotter. I've traveled fairly extensively and traveled all around the globe, always looking for uh, lots of tales of lore and mystery, as well as the paranormal, a few tiki bars in between, and uh, just I enjoy collecting stories from people. And that's why I'm very excited about my guest that is going to be joining me. Uh, she is, uh, her name is Vanessa Michelle, and she has the tourism company Les Voyages Extraordinaires. Yeah, that's my French pronunciation is it's not great. I, I, I am not bad as far as reading it but uh, not so good as far as pronouncing uh, and speaking some of my French. Not bad at the reading, though. So the Vanessa, let me tell you a little bit more about her. She is a professional paranormal investigator, and she lives in France, and she is French. She is an investigator by night, and during the day, she is a podcaster. She is a director. She's an event manager. She does a lot of things. And she also, for a long time, since 2014, has run a ghost hunt event company in France. And that is called Haunted France. She also produces and hosts the paranormal podcast, Who You Gonna Call? And she is. Additionally, a TV host for a paranormal TV show in France called Enquetes Paranormal. Paranormal. Okay, I, I'm going to have her pronounce that one. And she also recently wrote an essay for the book Fem Feminine Macabre, Volume Three. She graduated in communication and tourism. She used to work as a travel agent and in PR and as a customer manager. That's all interesting because that led to her combining her skills to form the Les Voyages, Voyage Extraordinaire. Sorry, it's almost cartoonish when I say it with my poor French accent. So, as I said, founder and CEO of the travel company, also organized and supervising all the tours to take us throughout France to see the most stupendous landscapes and learn about the spookiest legends. I have to say... I'm quite proud because I will be joining her on one such tour on April 10th to 23rd, 23rd in the south of France. And we're going to be exploring the myths and lore. Sorry, April 10th to the 18th, 2023 in the south of France. So without that said, I was also doing a little bit of soft showing here because I lost her connection for a moment. So I'm glad that she's back with me as I was stalling for time. So, without further ado, Vanessa, thank you so much for joining me. How are you? Bonjour, Aaron Sagers. <laughs> I'm good, and you? Bonjour. Except where you are, as we are filming this, it's not so much bonjour, it's uh, bon, bon, oui, bon, bonsoir. Oui? Bon, bonsoir. 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 Bonsoir, yes. We say bonne nuit when we go to bed. When you go to bed, that's right. So... I want people to post their questions in the live chat if they are watching the live stream. But, uh, of course, for my podcast friends, we'll, we'll try to cover a lot of ground for you if you're just listening after the fact. So, Vanessa, I, I kind of gave a little bit of the background on your work, but I'm curious about how you got your start in the paranormal. Okay, my start in the paranormal. So... Well, it be, it begins when uh, I was a kid because, you know, um, I have a gypsy family. So I was a kid and I've heard a lot about uh, magic, palm reading, uh, tower reading and everything. And also my family um, uh, 
uh, used to live uh, used to live in a haunted house in France. So when I was a kid, I was hearing all those ghost stories, and I was like, "Oh my God, this is so scary!" But uh, I was so scared of a ghost. And um, when I was a teenager, uh, my grandpa passed away, and uh, he came in a dream to tell me a family secret that I could verify later with my family. And I was intrigued by this ph phenomena. I couldn't understand what happened this night. So uh, I couldn't spend my life like, OK, it was strange, but that's OK. I'm going to continue to live. Uh, so I wanted to explain this ph phenomena. So I went to the library. I read a, a lot of books. Uh, I traveled a lot around the world to meet uh, some specialists to talk about it, to learn more about the paranormal phenomena. And the more it was going and the more I understood it was not only a passion, it was not only a way to uh, answer a question, it was a quest for me. And it was really my, maybe my mission in life um, to search for the paranormal and try to understand what is happening around us. So, would you consider yourself a psychic medium when because you were having these these dreams and you were able to independently verify that? Well, I would say that uh, I think everyone is a psychic a little bit uh, because I think um, as modern um, human beings, we have forgot um, we have forgotten to to open ourselves to the world and to be psychic. Uh, but I think I am a little bit as everyone. But I'm more a paranormal investigator because um, I'm very interested in the science and I love to bring science and history in my researches. Right. And I, I, I like that point as well, that everybody is a little bit tuned in, I say. It doesn't mean that yeah. you're necessarily sensitive, but, it, you know, we so much in our modern world, we close ourselves off from these things it begins in childhood when our parents tell us that the things that we are the ghosts we are seeing are just imaginary and then to fit into society yeah. we block those senses and then i think add to that the fact that you know we're surrounded by technology that's constantly looking at our phone and not so much yeah paying attention to what's going on around us now and already we have folks popping into our live chat saying that you are an amazing paranormal Hi. researcher in France. And we Hi. also have someone else Thank saying you. that they've been to many ghost hunts organized by you. And it was an amazing, amazing every time. You're incredible. That's great. So also just Thank for you. our our audiences that may not be familiar with it, when you say you come from a gypsy family, I think that there's a lot of misconceptions that can go with that. Can you explain that a little bit further about what you mean when you come from a gypsy family, as in your your blood is actually um, Eastern European, It's you've got uh, Romanian yeah. blood, or tell me. Yeah, it's very complicated when you speak about gypsy because it's difficult to say where we are from. So my grandparents used to say that we were travelers, that we are travelers. Um, and that's the way we say uh, gently that we are gypsy. But we don't know really where we are from. I would say, yes, from the east of Europe, but we are not sure about that. Um, but we are from everywhere. That's the beauty of it. But um, human beings used to be nomads. So we are all gypsy finally. We, we just set it up, but uh, I'm a gypsy. <laughs> I'm a real gypsy. How long have you, has your family been based in France? Well, as long as I know, I think it, at least 80 years, something like that. Okay. So, and and the town that you grew up in, can you talk, tell me a little bit about that? And if there was any, uh, you know, I, I know where you live is not necessarily where you grew up in, but where you grew up, were there any local legends or what was the personality of that town? Well, I used to come from uh, the east of France, you know, maybe the name of a city named Strasbourg. Um, it's very close to Germany. 
And um, well, this is a, a town very known for um, Le Père Fouettard, but I don't know if you know this one. This is the bad guy coming with Santa Claus and uh, is like uh, punishing the bad kids <laughs> with some, uh, with everything. <laughs> but he's not a, this is our biggest legend uh, in Lorraine. Uh, we have also a lot of ghosts because, of course, um, uh, we had a lot of history uh, in this side of France and mostly about uh, World War II. So there are a lot of things happening there. Yeah, it's curious because in the United States, a much younger country and a obviously our land has been populated by people for a very long time, indigenous Americans. But as far as the European colonists, you know, fairly young to this country and our notion of ghosts, it seems like we're still even our notion of ghosts and the paranormal is fairly young. It's it's very fascinating to us in a very kind of almost sensational way at times. What would you say is the as much as you can speak for your fellow uh, Frenchmen and women, what is the perception of the paranormal is it laughed off is it widely accepted is it something you talk about or something you don't talk about in france oh my god this is so taboo this is very difficult like well it it's getting better and better with the time but um if we talk like 10 years ago when i started i, I started uh, really uh, to work in this field uh, 15 years ago i was like one we were like five people in france and uh, I think now there are more people, but um, for example, we don't have any uh, paranormal TV show on TV. Uh, I'm a um, ghost and event manager, and I'm the only one in France organizing ghost and events, like the only one. I'm the only one organizing paranormal tours. Um, we are maybe like uh, five paranormal investigators, like doing a lot of things, being on TV or something like that. But I think it's very taboo. I think also that, <laughs> sorry for my French people, I love you very much, but I think sometimes French people can be so arrogant that they don't want to believe in paranormal phenomena. They, they believe that they can explain everything and that ghosts are bullshit. And uh, they don't want to spend time to watch a video, to uh, hear about it. And I try to explain to them sometimes that this is more fascinating than, than a ghost story. This is Mostly, everything is connecting to, to the paranormal phenomena, like all the mysteries of the world, of the galaxy, of the universe, everything is connected, but they don't want to hear that. So that's why um, in France, this is not popular to be a ghost hunter or paranormal investigator. When I say to the people, this is my job, they, they are like, okay, she's crazy. They don't believe me. So this is not good. As you say that you are the pretty much the only person that uh you know you you directed the show haunted france which was on video space and then it aired on amazon prime and then your ghost hunt company le nuit le nuit ghost hunt right um le nuit ghost hunt, yes <laughs> yes so you're you're pretty unique in that way you know it's yeah. it's interesting to me that for instance with paranormal caught on camera the show one of the shows i do we uh, accept videos from all over the world and we do receive videos from France and we receive submissions really? from your part of the world. Okay. So, yeah. So I kind of wonder if we're seeing TV shows and the pop culture fascination and uh, kind of crossing borders. There's almost like this, cross-cultural fascination that's that's starting to emerge within the paranormal the tv shows that we're airing in the united states or in the uk might be crossing over into france and then people are catching yeah. on to it and it's is that generating more interest now in the 21st oh, yeah. century in 2022 oh yeah of course i think um since ghost hunters and ghost adventures came on tv a long time ago now i, I think it was 50. 14 years ago, but the time it arrives in France, I think it was 10 years ago, um, the people started to have an interest in it. But before that, they, don't, they didn't know about uh, paranormal investigation. They didn't know it was possible to be a ghost hunter. 
like they knew about it with, thanks to Ghost Hunters and Ghost Adventures. And uh, thanks to it, because I think Ghost Adventures is the only show on French television, actually. There are no other shows, but unfortunate. <laughs> but um, I think since then, the people uh, are getting interested, and I see it uh, on my events, because more and more people are coming to the events, because they are interested in it, they want to investigate, they want to um, they want to go in haunted places because I mean we are in France, we have a lot of history, we have a lot of castles and so many places, interesting places with history, with ghosts, with legends, and we are the place to be to investigate paranormal. So I'm very happy because I think since five years, um, more and more people are into the paranormal, but it's still difficult. That's why I love to travel to the US. I think I. I come to the US like twice a year because this is like so easy. Like you go to a hotel and the hotel are, is telling you, yes, we have ghosts here. You, you can have a ghost hunt and a ghost tour and everything. Like everywhere you go, you can have a ghost tour or ghost and meet people speak paranormal here. If you do this, you, you are the crazy person. So this is very complicated. Well, and now I have to say, this is a shameless plug, but 28 Days Haunted on Netflix, it is it is on French Netflix, and there is yes. a French voiceover of me. Yes. <laughs> which which you... Girls. <laughs> <laughs> I know he says it really nice. The, and yeah, yeah you, you sent me a, a video of that, actually, so I, I did like that. What, what would you say is sort of the personality of the haunting that you have in France? And I know that's something of a difficult question, but is it, are you based on your research finding mainly very old medieval ghosts? Is it, <laughs> are there sort of the stories of angry ghosts of there? What, you know, I, I feel like you can learn a lot about a people based on the types of ghosts and types of ghost stories they tell. Yeah, absolutely. Um, this is interesting because um, there is a main difference between um, U.S. investigation and French investigation. I don't want to, to say that uh, all American investigations are the same, but when you watch TV, you, you see sometimes a lot of people talking about demon possessions and everything. In France, we don't. We don't talk about demon. We don't put religion in a paranormal investigation. And I think, um, but well, I know American people love to use history in uh, investigation, but in France, we only use uh, the history of a place. And this is interesting because uh, we are lucky to be in a place where we have a million years of history. Like, yes, we could talk to a knight, we could talk to a queen, we could talk to so many people from different years of time, but we don't. And this is very interesting because. Um, in 15 years of paranormal investigation, I think the most communication I had were with um, uh, recent uh, deaths and not from people coming from the Middle Ages or, you know, uh, antiquity. Or, uh, so this is interesting and this is something you can think about because what is happening? Why we can't speak for, with people from the Middle Ages, you know? Maybe, why? Where are the ghosts? Right. Well, there is one that I'll get to in a moment that I'll ask you about. One ghost, perhaps from the middle Middle Ages. But the uh, would you? I actually I want to talk a little bit about your adventures. Actually, one one point I'll just say to you is that it's interesting with the whole demon thing. I I found through my own observation that the you the the presence of demons in TV or, you know, as a narrative device or maybe even as a legitimate ent entity, depending on your perspective, the, the D word demons, it's not always associated with religion or let me say this, it, it's, it is associated yeah. with sort of a very Judeo Christian approach to religion, but it's not countered with, talking about the bible or mm -hmm. christ himself or about religion you know what i'm saying it's mm -hmm. it's sort of like yeah. you have the villain and you have the entity but the shows themselves don't like to talk about actual 
religion. So it's almost like a secularized Christian demon, if that can exist. Yeah, it's true. And you're right to say that because it's true that you have the devil, like Lucifer, Satan, and everything. And you also have the demon. And demons were part of um, a lot of history before uh, the, the religion came. So um, you don't need to use religion. It's true to, 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 to talk about demon uh, during investigation. But I wanted to point that in France, Actually, I'm not. Sh I'm not even sure that we we think that we can meet bad ghosts, like we can be in danger. Maybe some people, but most of the people, like me, <laughs> they don't. Uh, they are not scared of ghosts. Uh, they don't think ghosts can hurt them. And um, and maybe it's strange because uh, maybe there are bad ghosts, but I never met them. Never. Yeah. Never. So. Uh, the catacombs of Paris, you know, these are yeah. these these ossuaries, these collection of bones. They hold the remains of more than six million people, it's estimated, and it's part of this tunnel network. And I guess really became something of a um, built built in the late 1700s and then became something of a tourist attraction open to the public a little bit later on. So these are the famous, uh, the ones that I've been to, the ones that most tourists have been to, the and they're generally called the Catacombs of Paris, but that's actually a small part of this vast system of mines oh, yeah. and tunnels underneath Paris. And you were able to explore some yeah. of these other tunnels and i want to hear about it but i also want to know oh. it was very illegal what you did right yes <laughs> so illegal <laughs> well this is actually we called them the forbidden catacombs because yes you have the museum this is only two miles long uh, this is very beautiful but you have to pay the entrance this is very safe uh, there are some people uh, keeping the place like you've been this summer like each meter you have a guard looking at what you're doing, you don't have to take pictures. Well, this is really uh, a lot of control. Uh, and you have all the other catacombs called the Forbidden Catacombs, and it's as big as Paris. Like the street you have in Paris, you have the same thing in the other grounds. Like this is so big that you can lose yourself. And all the legends you've heard about uh, the catacombs are basically true because i mean there are a lot and some of them are so crazy but people getting lost people um, getting out like seven days after they were going in it's true like it's happening all the time that's why when you go to the forbidden catacombs you have to go with a cataphile this is like a guy with a map of the catacombs you cannot find anywhere you you, you have to ask this guy and those guys they don't want anyone to come in the, in the catacombs because they want to keep the secret. So this is very difficult to find someone. And um, four years ago, I was uh, filming Haunted France and I wanted to film like something crazy. And I found this guy, uh, Cataphile, and I said, okay, please, please, please take me to the catacombs. I want to see bones. I want to see, I want to crawl. Uh, I want everything. And he said, okay, come. And I've been there with my uh, cameraman, and um, it's been like very painful. <laughs> like, it was like going through little holes like this. No, maybe not like this because I cannot go, but uh, maybe like this. Uh, you have to go in water, you have to crawl uh, on the on little tunnel like this. And then after hours of going through this shit, sorry, um, we arrived a bunker a German bunker in the in the catacombs. It was like, okay, what is happening right now? And then we we went through and there were uh, there was a wild ossuary, like bones everywhere, but just thrown like this. And I was able to take skulls and to take uh, bones from the, from the legs and everything and it was like crazy. And then it took me to a place it was a from um, made of skulls and bones and I was like that's crazy and he told me this is only like 
1% of the catacombs that you're seeing now. He, he told me this is crazy what you can find in the catacombs. Uh, some people are living in the other grounds, like all the time. Some people are coming to have parties. Some people are coming to have the worst thing you can imagine, uh, black mass and everything. And also some people um, just come to have fun and they lose their, their, their self in the underground and sometimes they die. So this is awful. So this is interesting because you have a melting pot in these catacombs and no one knows. No one knows when you are a tourist, you cannot imagine that in the underground, all those things are happening. And you mentioned black masses and, and Vanessa did show me some footage from this adventure and you do see elements of what looks like a black mass in there. So it's fascinating because the top side on the surface, maybe people in France are not talking about demons and the devil and these supernatural elements, but clearly there are subcultures of people as there always is that are yeah. actually pursuing it. Yeah, yeah, there are a lot. And not only in the catacombs, there are in a lot of countries in France, but maybe they are not praying for Satan or for the devil, I don't know, but they are black mass. Yeah, yeah, a lot. And you, in, and you did sit on this throne of bones. Yeah. <laughs> but I, actually, I'm, I'm very fascinated with skulls and bones. Like, I, I could have some in, in my home because I really make the difference between what is what are the bones now? Like there are nothing. Um, I mean, when the people die, uh, the spirit is going somewhere else. It, it doesn't have to be attached to to the bones. So to me, there are only bones. That's it. But right. I'm very fascinated with it because I love it. I love it. I was touching the bones and the skulls all the time when I was there, and uh, I wasn't I wasn't scared. And my cameraman was like, "Okay, I don't want to touch them." But I understand. <laughs> yeah, I we I spoke about this with you that you're not doing it in a disrespectful way. You're viewing it as yeah. these are just leftovers. These aren't these aren't the people anymore. Uh, I do want to I want to shift gears a little bit about Disneyland France, formerly mm, yeah. Euro Disney, and so I had the fortune of joining Vanessa on <laughs> a tour of Disneyland France, and it was excellent. It was a very exciting day for me. It was my first time there. And yeah. not only was I able to go on the attractions, including the Haunted Mansion, my favorite, I was able to get a personalized tour of Disneyland Paris, the paranormal yeah. Disneyland Paris from Vanessa. And Vanessa, tell me a little bit about some of the lore and ghosts that you've you've personally heard of, because you you have a you have some actually very firsthand uh, knowledge of Disneyland Paris. Yes, I've been working there for 10 years, I think, when I was younger. You worked and, there 10 uh, years? Yeah, it's a okay. lot of time, right? But I'm, I'm old now, so it was when I was young. And, um, well, again, we are in France, so you don't hear ghost stories uh, all the time. But there are a few that I know, and I know them because I know the people. But one I want to tell you is one I experienced myself. Because my last job um, at uh, Disneyland Paris was working at the Tower of Terror, uh, Twilight Zone, and uh, it was the opening. Uh, it was in uh, it was 15 years ago, and uh, you know when you are a cast member and uh, you open the attraction, you have to come one hour before the opening to to try the attraction, to check everything, to see if everything is working right. So I was with my colleague. And we were checking everything and it was good. And then when you have checked everything, someone has to try the, the, the elevator. And, uh, and then I didn't want to do it this morning because I didn't want. And then my colleague went in, in, in the elevator. And when he came back, he was like about to faint. And I was like, are you okay? What is happening? Are you sick or something? And he said, you're going to tell me that I'm crazy, but I have to say it. I saw something in the elevator. And you know, when you take the elevator, there is a scene where you stop in front of a mirror and there are thermal images of the people and you can move, you know, and you see yourself moving in thermal images and then you disappear. And when he, when he arrived at this scene, 
well, it was supposed to be alone in the elevator, but there was another <laughs> another thermal image in the back of a room, and then you went like this, and there was no one, and it was like, oh my god, and then it's going like this, and it was like, oh my god, <laughs> when he arrived, he was like about to pen. And what is funny is that he didn't want to talk about it uh, to anyone, because I told you, it's taboo in France, you don't tell the stories like that. But a few years later, as I did a video about that, uh, some people sent me messages to tell me that it happened to them when they were a cast member at the Tower of, of Terror. So we actually actually have a ghost enjoying it himself in the elevator during the attraction, but we have one ghost. That's funny. Do you have any history connected to it? Do you know of anyone that ac recorded that passed away there or there might be a any any backstory to it? Well. At the time, they used to tell me that um, when they were building the tower, uh, it took five years, I think, um, uh, a guy uh, from the construction, I don't know the word, sorry, uh, died there. So I don't know if it's him, but it could be anyone. I mean, because what people don't know also that is, uh, okay, Disneyland Paris, well, Disneyland is magic and everything, but you know, a lot of people die there. Uh, like they die from heart attack, they die from accident. So it could be anyone because a lot, a lot of people died in this park. Yeah, and and as you said, the people bring their it's magic too. People bring a lot of strong emotions, and, yeah. and I love look, I love roller coasters. So I don't think that's a terrible way to spend your afterlife. I <laughs> I don't know if that thermal capture is still there at tower of terror now is it or have they renovated it and removed it they didn't they didn't it's still there but uh i don't know if uh, i didn't ask the cast member but i would love to investigate that i asked disney if i if i could come investigate and they say no well. no <laughs> tell me also about the story of the the little girl as oh the kids yes in yes okay so Again, when you are a cast member and you work at Disney, uh, when you close the park, you have to do what we call a clearance. Uh, it means that you uh, you are checking all the parts of the land to see if, if there are people. And if you find people, you tell them to go out. <laughs> That's it. And uh, there was this cast member at Fantasyland. It, it, it's at the frontier uh, of uh, Adventureland. And um, it was clear, so he was about to call uh, everyone and to say, okay, Fantasyland is clear, no one is there. And then he turned back and he saw a little girl and he's like, what are you doing here? And she's running. <laughs> and then he's running after her like, hey, little girl, stop, you have to come. What are you doing here by yourself? And she's running, running through Adventureland. And she's going, I, I think it's going through like one minute. And she's turning, he's taking the corner also, and she disappeared. And like he called everyone to check around because, you know, Adventureland, it's a lot of uh, trees and everything. They check everything. Uh, they didn't find any kid. They, no one was missing. No one was searching for a kid. It was not a kid. <laughs> well, maybe it was a kid, but not from this dimension. It was very strange. You, and, and so when you told me that story initially, that was before I had the opportunity of exploring these pirate caves where he saw this child run into. And when I eventually was able to explore those pirate caves, I was, I was just quite frankly blown away because we don't really have that kind of maze and that kind of installation at uh, the Magic Kingdom or Disneyland in Anaheim. So I myself got lost walking through those pirate caves and I loved it. I absolutely love that, that installation, that kind of attraction because you can wander around for truly like hours. It seems like, so I can imagine that experience of chasing a child in there and then suddenly it's very dark and very creepy yeah. and feeling like, okay, what did I just witness? <laughs> yeah. I like that. Yeah. The, very strange. Yeah. Do you, so in the, in Magic Kingdom, at least, I know we've we've heard of in Orlando, we've heard of stories of the Tower of Terror being haunted, and there's a specific elevator bank that is said to be haunted. And oh, I didn't and, know, really. Yeah, it's it's according to the lore, 
it's the a cast member of someone that was dressed as like a, a bellhop, as the elevator operator, I guess, and wow. who died on the job and then decides to stick around. And at the end of the night, when they check the attraction, they occasionally see him. So there's that. So maybe there's something about a attraction about ghosts that attracts ghosts. But yeah. also the Haunted Mansion, I think in both locations, the United States, People have sometimes smuggled ashes into the attraction to distribute. Yeah. Is that is that something that takes place at Disneyland Paris? Yeah, but not only in um, well, um, ours is called um, Phantom Manor, uh, right. but not only in this place, like everywhere, like they just throw the, the, the ashes everywhere they want, and it's so well. It's I think it's forbidden also in the US, but it's forbidden in France, and the and well. Yeah, they are doing it. So maybe it's that also. It could be those ghosts, yeah. It's also funny because those ashes get vacuumed up very quickly and there's cameras everywhere. So <laughs> if, you're, yeah. if you're dumping out your dead Aunt Sally, she's just getting put into a, a trash bag, uh, eventually a yeah. rubbish bag. So, <laughs> yeah. so about your tour company, about Les Voyages Extraordinaires. Yeah. Close. You look so German when you say that. Do I? Yeah. <laughs> I'm trying. I'm trying really hard. The why start the company? I kind of mentioned it in the introduction, but I'm curious, why would you start the company? And overall, what is your specific goal with these tours that, that you do? Well, first of all, um, I have a degree uh, in communication and also as a travel agent. So my main job uh, is to work in this field. Um, I've been doing the Ghost Hunt event, as I told you, um, as my own com company uh, for eight years now. And um, since I'm working a lot in the paranormal, like I'm doing a lot of, film, uh, of things. I'm a TV consultant, I'm doing my videos, I have a podcast, uh, I have my events and everything. At some point, I told to myself, okay, don't you want to, to do something that could be um, your passion and also your work? And if you combine those, um, it's having a travel company offering paranormal tours. And, and it was like so logic, like I was like, so logical. I mean, it was like, okay, this is my, this is what I want to do. So it took me a year or two to create uh, the travel company. Um, it opened like uh, this summer. And you're part of it. So my goal is to um, first of all to first of all it was to um, uh, offer paranormal tools to French people. We, that, that was the only goal. And then I thought, okay, maybe um, American people or English people want to come in France and to to learn about uh, our ghosts, our legends, and law and everything. So I combine everything, and my goal is to take people everywhere and to investigate uh, legends, law, paranormal, and and I want people to stop being scared of it. I want people to be interested, to uh, to stop uh, being ashamed of uh, believing in that. And I want them to travel and to enjoy the world. That's it. Well, and with your tour company, you go into the catacombs, you go into Paris, you're going to Normandy, oh, yeah. you cover a lot of ground. Yeah. And, I, and I also want to mention this comment from the chat that you know so many incredible places castles abbeys catacombs lots of secret and hidden places and that uh, you you debrief on the energy phenomena you cover seems like you do a lot on your investigations so with that said and all the ground that you cover what is the most beautiful region of france <laughs> that you are excited to explore and i might be slightly biased about this mm, i would say the most exciting and the most beautiful is probably perigord noir i think this is a place maybe you know because i think this is the one you come in yes. april 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 the perigord noir the so noir, yes. it's it's basically my understanding of this is so this is in the south of France and this is uh, it it's basically a black forest in a way it's chestnut these these dark chestnut trees pines holm oaks that have yeah. these dark colors and there's 
also so you have a lot of nature you have a lot of organic energy you also Mountain. have these yeah two rivers flowing through there and yeah. lots of valleys and old villages and just yeah a lot of rich history so what makes it kind of i mean i kind of said that but what makes it so magical that makes this worthy of a tour I think this is um, a very beautiful place, first of all, because this is close to Bordeaux. Uh, this is a region with a lot of wines, a lot of um, gastrono gastronomy over there is very good. The land um, landscape here yeah, are so, so, so beautiful. I think the most interesting part for me is that there are a lot of old villages that you can visit, like there is one called Rocamadour, it's built on the mountain and it's very like uh, going all around the mountain like this. And it's very interesting because you don't see this everywhere. So uh, all those places are like um, sites, uh, heritage of UNESCO, you know, and there are very like so many beautiful places. We're going to eat very well, to drink very well. Also, there are um, very interesting castles with white ladies. So I think it's going to be interesting because we're going to investigate one. Actually, we're going to dine all together. We have a dinner, a very fancy dinner. And then we are going to investigate this white, this white lady in this castle. Um, but what is interesting also is that close to, to this place, you have the Gévaudan. And the Gévaudan is very famous in France, at least for a, a legend that you know very well. Because when we were at Miparacon, I heard you uh, telling the stories like you know it by art. So can you tell us what is the story of Gévaudan? Well, the, as we know at the, the Beast of Gévaudan, the, it's some people, depending on the perspective that you have, it's either a very large wolf or some yeah. people believed it was a cryptid, maybe even a werewolf, some sort of supernatural beast. But whatever it is, it is documented historically documented in the 1760s, 1764 is sort of when it began, upwards of 610 attacks, 500 deaths, a lot of injuries, victims that were partially eaten. And it, this, is, this is one of the stories of France that I've just loved for such a long time because it caused such a stir and a chaos throughout the country and especially in this region that yeah. it was Louis the 15th I believe that commissioned mm -hmm. these wolf hunters to go after yeah. and bring him this wolf to kill this wolf that had been causing such chaos and disrupting business this disrupting the way of life in in this region and multiple wolves were killed and wolves were pretty much hunted to extinction in this region and yeah. there was ultimately a wolf that was killed but it's debatable whether or not it was actually the beast of Javadon. many people think it wasn't and, no. uh, and so it's a story that is both folklore it's fact and there's that paranormal yeah. and supernatural element too yeah and that's very interesting because um when they killed all the wolves of France, because we don't have, since this time, we don't have wolves anymore in France. I mean wild. Um, there were no more attacks of people. People didn't die anymore of, it, of that. So it was very strange, the, the coincidence, I mean. But since then, it's still a mystery. I mean, no one say, okay, we know what it was. There are a lot of theories about it, but no answer and you have over there a museum you can visit and also there is in france one guide <laughs> knowing everything and knowing all the attack sites and this guide is going to be with us for days and is going to take us around for us to understand what happened at this time and for us also to think about it because i mean it was like 200 years or 300 years i mean it was a long time ago and now we know more things. Um, so maybe we can understand uh, other things. Uh, but I mean, this is very, very interesting. But maybe it was a cryptid. Maybe it was a big wolf. 
some people say it could be um, a hyena uh, or a big lion coming from um, Africa because I mean at this time we didn't have any zoo or anything so we didn't know about African beast. Uh, it could be also a man disguised in a, in a wolf so like a serial killer. So this is very, very interesting and I'm, I can't wait to take the people over there because I think we're going to have a very good time with this guy because he's the only one in France doing this. Yeah. Yeah, some people I've read believe it's a Tasmanian tiger as well that was yeah. imported yeah. into the country. And and I can imagine, I can kind of see that, you know, people go around, early travelers, if they were going around the world and typically very wealthy people capturing whatever they could, stealing whatever riches they could and bringing it yeah. back into the country. And then suddenly this thing gets gets uh, loose. So that's, I mean, it yeah. is a story. It's uh, it's definitely one of my favorite. I think it's really fascinating that on this uh, myths and lore of the south of France and Paragonois, you are going to be exploring that, having a guide, maybe even encountering wolves that someone is someone's trying to, to raise and essentially not to release into the wild, but in a way bring wolves back to France. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We have... Um... A, a, a big park in this place, Gévaudan, uh, where some w wolves are, are free to, to go around. But I mean, this is a park, and the, I think they were they were coming from Italy bec before, before, because we don't have any wolves anymore. But uh, yes, we're going to meet some uh, wild wolves, so it's going to be good. And you touched on this, but in the same region, there's the Chateau de Puy-Martin uh, in the in oui. Salat. In Sarla, oui, oui. Uh, yes, this is the place where we're going to um, have a dinner and investigate this white, uh, this white lady. And this is a big castle, actually, very interesting castle. Yeah, Château it's it's one of the most haunted, they say, castles in, in definitely in the region and in France. And yeah. this this was. Yeah created a, a, it was kind of established in the end of the 13th century but it it saw a lot of battle and was rebuilt over time and the white lady of of Paragua, Paragua is the she's kind of a classic ghost story right it's yeah the do you, can you share a little bit about the white lady ghost i mean i can i can talk a little bit as well but Say, say it. <laughs> I'm very interested. No, just the as far as my awareness of it, and correct me if I'm wrong. It's it's you're definitely more of an expert on this, but the as far as classic white lady ghosts, uh, she was her husband discovered her with a lover. She was locked into a tower. And there is indeed the tower of the white lady that exists, and she was locked away for her betrayal. And it's now they believe that her soul, her tormented soul, roams the halls. And overnight guests, visitors say they see her. And the, the legend itself dates to the end of the 1800s. And it's added to the reputation of this, of this castle. Yeah, and you know this is very interesting because um, uh, in the 80s, uh, we had a big show in France called uh, Mister Mysteries, and uh, it was all about paranormal phenomena in France and paranormal cases. And they 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 sent at this time um, a team with um, policemen, uh, journalists, and everyone to this castle. And they said that they documented the ghost of uh, this white lady in this castle. Well, when you see it. You don't see anything. It's very strange, actually. But at the, at the time, it was like a huge. It was very huge. Like, oh my God, we had a ghost uh, captured on a, on a film. Um, but this is interesting also because in France, you know, no castle are going to tell you that they have ghosts in the, in the castle as they all have ghosts. But they can say that they have white ladies and it's always the same story. Like, it was a lady, she was killed by a man, or she was, uh, um, oh, I don't know the world, but you know, when you put someone in the wall, I don't know the, the world the, exactly. Sort of entombed in the walls. Yeah. Uh, 
and uh, it was common things. I mean, at the Middle Ages in in Europe. So, um, but it's always the same story. And the castles, they love to say, "Oh yes, we have a white lady is come. She she she's coming every year at this time of year." Blah 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 blah. And that's why I really, it's not that I don't believe in white ladies, but it's only beautiful ghost stories to not say that they have ghosts, you know. So I'm more interested to go to this, to those places to investigate the real ghosts, that the white ladies, that to me are the, the nice way to say to the people that we have ghosts, you know. Yeah, and... And uh, we have a comment coming in from the chat that guests sleeping in the castle saw her at night as a white silhouette on the ceiling. And maybe maybe we will see her specter during our visit to the castle. And as far as the white lady ghost, it is a very pop. I mean, across the world in the United States as well, the white lady ghost is is commonly reported or it's kind of a trope, if you will, of a classic ghost story. Now, from my perspective, I don't think that that means that it doesn't exist. I think instead, maybe sometimes we, as flawed humans or whatever, we ex- we kind of develop this image that we expect to see. So when we encounter something strange or unusual, it's represented in that way. Almost like that's, that's what we are manifest, or not manifesting, but that's how we interpret it, something. Um, so, you know, after all the paranormal, we don't know exactly how it all works. The, yeah, yeah. So if she's haunting, if she's if she's haunting those walls, then hopefully we will be able to encounter her or other ghosts yes. in the castle. It, just the region overall is also known for just in some of my readings. And I need to dig deeper, but a land of fairies, possibly trolls, witches. In fact, I saw a artwork from an artist named. Jafra uh, Boshar that did a lot of work in this region and was inspired by this region and it has some very like incredible dark spooky supernatural artwork about witches and fairies and whatnot but there's these other kind of natural lore or, or supernatural uh, spirits and elementals and whatnot through this region. It's true that um, in France, um, but I think this is all around France, that we talk a lot about, about fairies, uh, elves, uh, because I think there are some places where the telluric forces are very interesting, actually. And it's true that um, Sala and all the places we are going uh, in April uh, are very close to the center of France. And you know that in the center of France, it used to be the place for the witches. Uh, this is a very interesting place if you want to know more about European witches because it was the place they chose to go and to to practice their magic. So I, I I mean this is for a reason. So yes, the center of France and all around this is very interesting for the telluric forces and for all the elementals as you say. So yes, they are not only the best of, the beast of Gévaudan, not only the white lady. I mean we have also the fairies and everything. So it's going to be. It's almost like the paranormal center, epicenter, or supernatural core of France, this region, because you have all of these stories coming out of here. Yes, you have the Beast of Chevaudan, you have fairies, you have witches, you mm-hmm. have these, you have the ghosts. And then there's even these prehistoric caves that are 20,000 oh. or much older, 20,000 years old. 20,000, 20, yes. Yeah, 20,000 years old. And these, the, there's cave paintings, and they're showing a way of life. They're showing some of their own beliefs at the time in these cave paintings. And they were even inhabited. Some of them were inhabited up, up until the 20th century, uh, based on some of my reading. So this uh, this also contributes to this this mythical and supernatural personality of France. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's true. Uh, Well, also, in this region, you have uh, what we call troglodyte. I don't know if it's really English, if you understand me. Yes, there are a lot of troglodyte um, houses. Uh, So people used to live um, in those places built in the mountain. It was very common in this place, in this region, I mean. So this is very interesting to to think about it. And I think 
I think everything is concentrated, as you say. And this is when I was um, listening to you. Uh, it it was re sorry. It reminded me of something that John Tene used to say that um, sometimes you have places where everything is concentrated, like there are UFO, there there are cryptids, ghosts, and everything, because it looks like there are epicenter of um of energy and telluric forces like portals and it's like everything is happening there and i think this is the place here yeah. i think the center of france is very interesting for that yeah it, it really does i mean we've there's there's stories you know offhand thinking about something like skinwalker ranch but there's locations that do send it tend to yeah. draw all sorts of activity and they're it's a fascinating and very much outside the norm. I mean, this is not an area that as gorgeous as it is, as historical as it is, as great as the wine is there, which there will oh, be yeah. wine. They, this is oh, not yeah. really an area that most tourists, especially American tourists visit. This is sort of an adventure outside of the known France that a lot of American tourists check out. Right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and this is why I wanted to take the people there because most of the time they go to Paris, of course, they go uh, in Brittany, in Normandy, and I have tours over there because they are very interesting places. But this part of France is n no people are going there, and you know that what is tr is interesting is that people don't visit those places. But when American people or English people, um, I mean people coming from England come to live in France, they come in this part of France because this is the most beautiful, this is the most mm, great to live because everything is great. I mean, you have beautiful weather all year, uh, the good food, the good people, the good landscape and everything. So this is interesting to see that they don't uh, travel there, but they live there. And like if you go around, there are only English people all around. It's, yeah. This is, I think, a a truly authentic experience and and pretty unique for what a lot of tourists. Yeah. Uh, I, I've I've explored part of this region, but not even fully to this extent. And but I'm very familiar with the legends and the lore there. I have to say, so yes, if I I will be involved in this tour with Vanessa, and this is taking place yeah. April 10th to the 18th, 2020. Three and why is this a good? T why is April a good time to go? Because maybe people are not aware of the significance of April and 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 French tourism. Well, um, only because of the weather. Uh, weather in France at this time of the year is like perfect. Like we're going to have um, a very good weather, no rain. Uh, uh, it's going to be warm, not very hot. Uh, also, it's good because um, uh, all the people are not traveling yet. Like, as every place is, when you go in the summer, there are a lot of people everywhere. But at this time of year, we're going to be, like, all alone. Uh, so it's going to be amazing. It's going to be amazing this time of year. So sunny, nice, co nice comfortable temperature, and not overly crowded with, uh, with tourists in a location that's a true adventure that most people don't get to see, but is this paranormal core of France, a literal center yeah. of France. I mean, it, it sounds pretty yeah. great. I'm, I'm excited about this. So before yeah, I, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so any final thoughts that you would like people to know about uh, Les Voyages Extraordinaires and your work and about the myths and lore of the South of France tour? Well, I think we say it a lot, actually, but um, I would love them to, to travel more in France, but I mean to travel and to not only uh, visit the famous monuments, even if I know it's what the people want to do when, when they travel and they pay so much, um, uh, their, their travel, but um, I want them to to go in the old places, to travel in castles, and to um, to get in uh, an interest in the ghosts in France. And I would be very interested um, 
to talk with more American people um, uh, and to see them investigate in France and to, to, to see what they think. Uh, because to me, there are many differences between the way we investigate in the US and the way we, we investigate in France. And I can't wait to talk to the people and to see what they think about that. If, if that's really different or if that's only me. And uh, I want, yes, I want them to investigate the places. And what are the timelines for booking for this tour? Well, uh, actually, uh, the closing dates are in January. So it's in two months. So I think if you are interested, you should book as fast as you can. Because yeah. we want you to come with us, please. <laughs> yes, especially, I, I expect... For those of us that live in regions that get quite cold, thinking about a lovely spring in France is going to be quite appealing. Yeah. <laughs> yes. And the website is www. I uh, les voyages extraordinaires, and I will post it in the caption for the podcast as well. And my guest is paranormal investigator, French TV personality. Yeah and CEO of the paranormal tourism company, Le Voyages Extraordinaire. <laughs> and it's, you, you, can say it, you can say it properly, uh, since I'm not. No, but I love the way you say it. Um, Le Voyages Extraordinaire. Le Voyages Extraordinaire. I need to get my Netflix, <laughs> my Netflix voiceover actor to I do it for me. Girls. I won't yes. say girls. Uh, <laughs> I won't say girls. <laughs> uh, Vanessa, Michelle, thank you so much for joining me. And I hope you guys enjoyed this sort of paranormal postcard talking about the paranormal from another location. Thank you guys for joining me. And thank I you. invite all of you guys out there to join us both this next April, Please. April 10th to the, to the 18th uh, in 2023. So, until next time, my friends, be kind. Thank you very much, Alan. See you Thank soon. You, bye bye. <laughs> Everybody out there, be kind, stay spooky, and keep it weird.